can see me. It's Karen Colville. Um, I'm a Canadian artist and uh, I've been in a little bit of a dilemma uh, lately and so I have been working at wanting to be more eco-friendly and have minimal impact. That is really important to my values. And I couldn't find materials that would live up to the task. So I tried outsourcing whatever supplies I could get in Canada. I found an artist that was in North, she's in Northern BC. She formulated her own uh, paint and I found the colors were too dull and chalky because they were, it's chalk paint and it, it was meant for furniture. Yeah, I can talk and paint at the same time, isn't that incredible? And yeah, I've been hesitant to come on camera for some time now because I, I have been quite ill and uh, and I haven't, it's not that I've let my appearance go, it's just some of my attitudes have changed. Like, I don't have to be dressed to the nines, I'm an artist. Like, I wear a t-shirt or I wear funky clothes, but I don't have to be uh, fully made up. Hmm. Sorry. So today is a very exciting day for me. And I'm getting to that. I am working with clay based paint that is very popular in America and in Canada. It's, it's called DIY. And it's funny, when I first discovered this weeks ago, I thought, oh great, she's in California. How am I going to get this? And she mentions Canada. I'm like, yeah. So, uh,. I went on her website and I found a distributor, a retailer that sells her paint and I contacted her. But she's up in Abbotsford. And so, yeah, she guided me and she said, well, rather than ordering online, why don't you just go to the store? And I said, yeah, because I like, didn't want to pay Canada Post extraordinary shipping. I'm on Sendal. Um, anyway, because um, I'm developing. And so what I did was um, I went to the store and they were very patient with me. The store is moving to Vancouver Island. And while I was there, it was, um, how do I say it? Like, well, when I first went there, the day was wrong, and that wasn't of, of anyone's fault, because they had just recently changed to opening up on Thursday, and I went on the Wednesday. So then, I had to feel well enough to go back on the Friday, and I went back on the Friday, and uh, it all worked out, and I bought a number of DIY paints to try out. I'm not endorsing them yet because this is my first time using it and it's excellent paint. It's giving me the effect that I want more than anything because I'm looking for something that has a kind of a shabby, chic, beachy kind of look. It's, it's giving me the results and what I was going to do with this mat was I was going to take it back to the framer and just replace it with a new mat. And what happened was there was a little teensy eensy speck on the mat and the mat was cream color. So what I, do I decide to do? I decided to paint it and the color, the pigment is too strong for the painting. So now I'm using this, this is beautiful. It's called Tarnish Pearl, and it's giving me that beachy, sandy look that I want, 
and also like this sort of shabby chic like very casual what I wanted for the painting so it's turning out really beautiful now two years ago um, I wanted to get into painting furniture I thought that would be a great thing and I discovered a company on Vancouver Island and to me at the time the paints weren't in my budget and so I ordered the one that was on clearance and it was this sort of mustardy yellow green and I painted my chair I found a chair I painted it it was in really good condition at that time I found the chair and I painted it this ugly yellowy mustard green and it looked okay in the photos but it's still ugly and I thought and then I had friends sending me oh why don't you paint it with dots or and I thought oh that's gonna take forever to do a mandala on it or something like that and then so I decided I was going through a blue phase so I ordered some blue paint and I painted it blue and I thought that's too ugly too and I thought well then I thought to myself and then a third a third coat on this thing and that's gonna be my next project because it's still kind of rainy out and I'm waiting for the sun to come back so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take the DIY farm girl and take it to that and maybe paint some flowers or something really funky on that and uh, then I can sell it I can sell it as a plant holder not as a chair anymore because the rain has pulverized it to the point where it's damaged a chair and I'm gonna have to either figure out how to fix the chair but I think it's better as a plant holder and I think you'll agree with me but for now back to my painting so I wanted something that had brilliant cues in it that I could actually do painting with and through my research I discovered Deb's friend Dion and she does all kinds of beautiful floral paintings she does paintings on clothes and she's this beautiful colorful lady and and she's a business coach and I thought that's inspiration for me so I checked in kind of peeked into her sort of creative scene and I discovered the other artists uh, that were there and some of them are vintage furniture makers the artists I'm not trying to digress too much because this is important so most of the people that have started out they have painted furniture and then they've become fine artists as a result I'm a fine artist and I'm looking to expand what I'm doing and I'm wanting to go into furniture but I'm in a very tiny place and um, I'm not going to be able to do furniture even if I have do it outside then I have to consider getting storage and all this kind of stuff and it complicates things so I'm gonna start off with small pieces and I have unfinished small pieces that have been sitting here for about two years and I was so dissatisfied nothing against the company but these things were paints were kind of similar to what I saw with Annie Sloan and they're great for country and all this kind of stuff but it just didn't have the color brilliance like it's meant for country furniture it's not meant for painting so I did two paintings with this company in um, Victoria BC I can't mention their name yet but I did two paintings with it and um, they sold so I was like cool because there are people that like that kind of chalky kind of look and I turn it into fine art but I thought these are colors that I want to stick with so I have a full range of colors that I can experiment with and I'm gonna go and do it but by bit and I don't like coming on camera anymore because I've been feeling ill and when you're not at your best you just don't want to be in front of people but if you don't see me then it's almost like I've disappeared so here's another thing sorry about that 
and I don't want to edit video. Here is some clay. So last year I was so frustrated. I thought, well, why? I watched I don't know how many videos doing research on formulating your own paint. I thought, well, if these chicks can formulate their own paint. It's just a matter of getting pigment in the binders and this sort of thing. But I haven't found anything that I could do that, uh, and then it's getting the pigments. Like, I had pigments that I bought. They're all the way from Ontario. And then the company went out of business, so I kind of felt screwed. Like, geez, like this beautiful blue iris that I bought is just gone. So, with Deb, she's been an answer to my prayers right lately. Like, I just happened to find her at random, and I find the weirdest video on there. It's these doll heads. And I thought, whoa, but this is, maybe this is somebody interesting, just keep watching. And then I, I found, what, a beautiful family, and all these projects that she does, so, and she's not afraid to try new things out. And her one doll had proje project with the leaves, with the clay that she sculpted onto them, that turned out to be absolutely stunning. So you never know what like some things that may appear a little bit ugly or creepy at the time can transform into the most beautiful things and that's a lesson with itself don't judge right away <laughs> and, and uh you know don't judge me either <laughs> so yeah and getting back to clay i digress sometimes too much uh but it's interesting sometimes um with the clay this is from brazil and I bought it imported locally. I went to a local store and I bought it. And I thought, well, why don't I start painting with clay? Why don't I don't make, make my own paint with clay? But it's hard trying to figure out how to make your own paint and that it actually works. So this is my solution right here. And, uh, you know, it's hard to get. But one girl said on, on YouTube, she said, don't walk, run to get this paint because it's it, it's great paint, and so I thought, yeah, this is the one I decided to try today, and it dries like it doesn't. It dries quite brilliant too, and it's working with what I've already laid down. So I don't have the expense of going to the framer and have him replace the mat. So. Yeah, I don't have to formulate my own paint. I can get this paint, and even though it's 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 at a reasonable price point, the shipping is a problem. So, if uh, I can convince some of the retailers to um, change shippers or have another shipping option, that might work for me. Uh, otherwise, um, it might be a day trip up to Vancouver Island because I'm wanting this uh, Pacific Arts Market to represent me at some level. Uh, that's my next move because I've been working uh, in disability arts and in community arts for a number of years now and I'm barely making a living sometimes and it's really a hard struggle and to try to save money to get out of the city. Like I, I'm, I'm happy to be here there are opportunities here, but it's very expensive, and I'm wanting a more affordable life as a creative person, and so I really hope that I can turn things around, and this is my solution for the time being, is having the right product with the right formula, so Deb, she has done so many women's businesses for them to grow and for them to flourish as, as uh, entrepreneurs and to for their, to nurture their own development is, is quite amazing just to have the right product to use as your materials and I've been very selective because my name and my reputation goes into what I create and yeah, and I'm excited. I bought this stuff too that I want to try out to be able to, um, it's a liquid patina. So I want to be able to try this on some 
clothes that I'm tired of that I bought. I have this big vintage hat and Dion's inspired me to want to see what I can do. So I don't want to give my secrets away right now as what are my little plans are, but I do plan on making good use of this and transforming some of the things that I have that are unfinished and some of my new projects that I have in mind. So yeah, it's so vital having the right product do its job and at a decent price point. So kudos. Anyway, yes, thank you Deb DIY, beautiful family. And uh, yeah, I feel truly blessed and looking forward to finishing up my projects and getting them out on the market and recovering my health, most important. Okay, have a good one. Bye for now.